In mathematics, the conjugate gradient method is an algorithm for the numerical solution of particular systems of linear equations, namely those whose matrix is symmetric and positive definite. The conjugate gradient method is often implemented as an iterative algorithm, applicable to sparse systems that are too large to be handled by a direct implementation or other direct methods such as the Kolesky decomposition. Large sparse systems often arise when numerically solving partial differential equations or optimization problems. The conjugate gradient method can also be used to solve unconstrained optimization problems such as energy minimization. It was mainly developed by Magnus Hestines and Edward Stiefel. Magnus Hestines and Edward Stiefel in 1952. The method of conjugate gradients was developed independently by E. Stiefel of the Institute of Applied Mathematics at Zurich and by M. R. Hessines with the cooperation of J. B. Rosso, Forsyth, and L. Page of the Institute for Numerical Analysis, National Bureau of Standards. Recently, Lankzos developed a closely related routine based on his earlier paper on eigenvalue problem. The biconjugate gradient method provides a generalization to non-symmetric matrices. Various nonlinear conjugate gradient methods seek minima of nonlinear equations. Description of the method. Suppose we want to solve the following system of linear equations x equals b for the vector x where the known n times n matrix A is symmetric, positive, definite, and real, and b is known as well. We denote the unique solution of this system by x. The conjugate gradient method is a direct method. We say that two non-zero vectors u and v are conjugate if since a is symmetric and positive definite. The left-hand side defines an inner product two vectors are conjugate if and only if they are orthogonal with respect to this inner product. Being conjugate is a symmetric relation. If u is conjugate to v, then v is conjugate to u. Suppose that is a set of n mutually conjugate vectors. Then P forms a basis for, and we may express the solution X of in this basis. Based on this expansion we calculate, which implies, this gives the following method for solving the equation X equals B. Find a sequence of N conjugate directions, and then compute the coefficients alpha K. The conjugate gradient method is an iterative method. If we choose the conjugate vectors p, k carefully, then we may not need all of them to obtain a good approximation to the solution x. So, we want to regard the conjugate gradient method as an iterative method. This also allows us to approximately solve systems where n is so large that the direct method would take too much time. We denote the initial guess for x by x0. We can assume without loss a generality that x0 equals 0. Starting with x0 we search for the solution and in each iteration we need a metric to tell us whether we are closer to the solution x. This metric comes from the fact that the solution x is also the unique minimizer of the following quadratic function, so if f becomes smaller in an iteration it means that we are closer to x. This suggests taking the first basis vector p0 to be the negative of the gradient of f at x equals x0, the gradient of f equals x minus b. Starting with a guest solution, x0, this means we take p0 equals b minus x0. The other vectors in the basis will be conjugate to the gradient, hence the name conjugate gradient method. Let rk be the residual at the kth step. Note that rk is the negative gradient of f at x equals xk, so the gradient descent method would be to move in the direction rk. Here, we insist that the directions pk be conjugate to each other. We also require that the next search direction be built out of the current residue and all previous search directions, which is reasonable enough in practice. The conjugation constraint is an orthonormal type constraint and hence the algorithm bears resemblance to Gram-Schmidt orthonormalization. This gives the following expression. Following this direction, the next optimal location is given by with where the last equality holds because pk and xk1 are conjugate. 
The resulting algorithm the above algorithm gives the most straightforward explanation of the conjugate gradient method. Seemingly, the algorithm as stated requires storage of all previous searching directions and residue vectors, as well as many matrix vector multiplications, and thus can be computationally expensive. However, a closer analysis of the algorithm shows that Rk plus 1 is conjugate to pi for all i less than k, and therefore only Rk, Pk, and Xk are needed to construct Rk plus 1, Pk plus 1, and Xk plus 1. Furthermore, only one matrix vector multiplication is needed in each iteration. The algorithm is detailed below for solving Ax equals B where A is a real, symmetric, positive of definite matrix. The input vector x0 can be an approximate initial solution or zero. It is a different formulation of the exact procedure described above. This is the most commonly used algorithm. The same formula for B to K is also used in the Fletcher-Reeves nonlinear conjugate gradient method. Computation of alpha and beta in the algorithm, alpha k is chosen such that is orthogonal to rk. The denominator is simplified from since. The beta k is chosen such that is conjugated to pk. Initially, beta k is using an equivalently the numerator of beta k is rewritten as because and rk are orthogonal by design. The denominator is rewritten as using that the search directions pk are conjugated and again that the residuals are orthogonal. This gives the beta in the algorithm after cancelling alpha k. Example code in MATLAB, new octave function, x, equals conjgrad r equals b a asterisk x, p equals r, r sold equals r, asterisk r, for i equals 1, length up equals a asterisk p, alpha equals r sold, x equals x plus alpha asterisk p, r equals r alpha asterisk app. R's new equals R, asterisk R, if SQRT less than 1 E10 break, end, P equals R plus asterisk P, R sold equals R's new, end, end, numerical example consider the linear system X equals B given by we will perform two steps of the conjugate gradient method beginning with the initial guess in order to find an approximate solution to the system. Solution for reference. The exact solution is our first step is to calculate the residual vector R0 associated with X0. This residual is computed from the formula R0 equals B, X0, and in our case is equal to since this is the first iteration. We will use the residual vector R0 as our initial search direction P0. The method of selecting PK will change in further iterations. We now compute the scalar alpha 0 using the relationship we can now compute x1 using the formula this result completes the first iteration. The result being an improved approximate solution to the system x1. We may now move on and compute the next residual vector r1 using the formula our next step in the process is to compute the scalar beta 0 that will eventually be used to determine the next search direction p1. Now, using this scalar beta 0, we can compute the next search direction p1 using the relationship we now compute the scalar alpha 1 using our newly acquired p1 using the same method as that used for alpha 0. Finally, we find x2 using the same method as that used to find x1. The result, x2, is a better approximation to the system's solution than x1 and x0. If exact arithmetic were to be used in this example instead of limited precision, then the exact solution would theoretically have been reached after n equals 2 iterations. Convergence properties of the conjugate gradient method the conjugate gradient method can theoretically be viewed as a direct method, as it produces the exact solution after a finite number of iterations, which is not larger than the size of the matrix, in the absence of round-off error. However, the conjugate gradient method is unstable with respect to even small perturbations, e.g., most directions are not in practice conjugate, and the exact solution is never obtained. Fortunately, 
The conjugate gradient method can be used as an iterative method as it provides monotonically improving approximations to the exact solution, which may reach the required tolerance after a relatively small number of iterations. The improvement is typically linear and its speed is determined by the condition number of the system matrix. The larger is, the slower the improvement. If is large, preconditioning is used to replace the original system with so that gets smaller than, see below, the preconditioned conjugate gradient method. In most cases, preconditioning is necessary to ensure fast convergence of the conjugate gradient method. The preconditioned conjugate gradient method takes the following form. Repeat if Rk plus 1 is sufficiently small then x at loop end if end repeat the result is xk plus 1. The above formulation is equivalent to applying the conjugate gradient method without preconditioning to the system where the preconditioner matrix M has to be symmetric positive definite and fixed i.e., cannot change from iteration to iteration. An example of a commonly used preconditioner is the incomplete Kolesky factorization, the flexible preconditioned conjugate gradient method. In numerically challenging applications, sophisticated preconditioners are used, which may lead to variable preconditioning, changing between iterations. Even if the preconditioner is symmetric positive definite on every iteration, the fact that it may change makes the arguments above invalid, and in practical tests leads to a significant slowdown of the convergence of the algorithm presented above. Using the polak ribera formula instead of the Fletcher-Reeves formula may dramatically improve the convergence in this case. This version of the preconditioned conjugate gradient method can be called flexible, as it allows for variable preconditioning. The implementation of the flexible version requires storing an extra vector for a fixed preconditioner, so both formulas for beta k are equivalent in exact arithmetic, i.e., without the round-off error. The mathematical explanation of the better convergence behavior of the method with the polak ribera formula is that the method is locally optimal in this case. In particular, it does not converge slower than the locally optimal steepest descent method. Example code in MATLAB, new octave function, x, k, equals cgp percent synopsis. Percent x 0, initial point percent A, matrix A of the system x equals B percent C, preconditioning matrix can be left or right percent mit, maximum number of iterations percent stole, residue norm tolerance percent BBA, black box that computes the matrix vector product for A asterisk Q percent BBC, black box that computes percent for left side preconditioner, har equals c, ra percent for right side preconditioner, har equals c asterisk ra percent x, estimated solution point percent k, number of iterations done percent percent example, percent tick, x, t equals c, g, p, b, 3000, 10 carat minus 8, it's z asterisk o, at o, toc percent elapsed time is 0 0.550190 seconds, percent percent reference, percent metadus iterative os tipo cre love para system linealis percent b, Molina YM, Radon, ISBN 908-261078 x if, error, end, if, error, end, if, error, end, x equals x0, ha equals 0, hp equals 0, hpp equals 0, ra equals 0, rp equals 0, rpp equals 0, u equals 0, k equals 0, ra equals b, bba, percent less than ra equals b a asterisk x zero while greater than stole ha equals bbc percent less than ha equals c ra k equals k plus one if warning return and hpp equals hp rpp equals rp hp equals ha rp equals ra t equals rp asterisk hp if u equals hp else u equals hp plus 
asterisk Q end O equals B B A percent less than O equals A asterisk Q A equals T X equals X plus or asterisk Q Ra equals R P of asterisk O end the conjugate gradient method versus the locally optimal steepest descent method. In both the original and the preconditioned conjugate gradient methods one only needs to set in order to make them locally optimal, using the line search, steepest descent methods. With this substitution, vectors P are always the same as vectors Z, so there is no need to store vectors P. Thus, every iteration of these steepest descent methods is a bit cheaper compared to that for the conjugate gradient methods. However, the latter converge faster, unless a variable preconditioner is used. See above. Derivation of the method. The conjugate gradient method can be derived from several different perspectives, including specialization of the conjugate direction method for optimization, and variation of the Arnold E. Lanczos iteration for eigenvalue problems. Despite differences in their approaches, these derivations share a common topic, proving the orthogonality of the residuals and conjugacy of the search directions. These two properties are crucial to developing the well-known succinct formulation of the method, conjugate gradient on the normal equations. The conjugate gradient method can be applied to an arbitrary n by m matrix by applying it to normal equations ATA and right-hand side vector ATB. Since ATA is a symmetric positive semi-definite matrix for any A, the result is conjugate gradient on the normal equations. ATAX equals ATB is an iterative method. It is not necessary to form ATA explicitly in memory, but only to perform the matrix vector and transpose matrix vector multiplications. Therefore CGNR is particularly useful when A is a sparse matrix since these operations are usually extremely efficient. However the downside of forming the normal equations is that the condition number kappa is equal to kappa 2 and so the rate of convergence of CGNR may be slow, and the quality of the approximate solution may be sensitive to round-off errors. Finding a good preconditioner is often an important part of using the CGNR method. Several algorithms have been proposed. The LSQR algorithm purportedly has the best numerical stability when A is ill-conditioned, i.e., A has a large condition number, 